Okay, folks, we're at core 2A. And what we're going to do is we're going to end up on this star cluster over here. Uh, we're going to zoom in, and you're going to get a good view of... Okay, I'm zoomed in at 777% of, of a screen, and you can see everything that they're blocking. Okay, you can see the pixels of what they block out. They block out this area here. You can see the pixels very easy. Now when I go to magnifier, remember my pointer gets screwed up, but right now I can point everything. All these pixels. Now there's a star there. You can see that. Okay. You can see all these stars here. So what they're doing is they're blocking a star cluster from us that is behind the sun. Well, well we're behind. We're on A behind, okay? So what this is, is this is lower uh, or upper, as you see, the top of the sun. Upper, when you're at Earth, this is upper to your left hand side when you look at the sun, okay? Because this satellite is basically like if I was zoomed down, okay, which I just did, I zoomed down, okay? So that star cluster is over there. Earth's over here, okay? This is the angle that you're looking from core A, and hopefully I can zoom with. I will go down to like 200, and there, it's just like that, you see? Now what's down here is Mercury, okay? There's Mercury. So if you go to JPL, basically this core A is up at an angle where Mercury's, Mercury's working to the left, which actually Mercury goes counterclockwise around, and then you get the actual factual of where the angle of view from the satellite's at, okay? Because actually, Mercury, you're going to see Mercury come into this shot, and Mercury goes counterclockwise around the sun. Okay. Now that's clockwise there. Okay. That I'm the motion I'm giving you, but the idea that when you're just looking at the sun, the Mercury goes like this, and all of us do. We go around like this, not in a perfectly flat line, but we corkscrew around the sun like this and we the sun drags us and it's corkscrew that it does through space okay with this star cluster here okay just like water going down a drain okay and that star cluster there that you see that they block everything from here to here because they don't want you fearing and thinking that we're going supernova okay now there's a remnant there's a huge remnant up here that's bigger than Jupiter okay that we always see and basically it can take you to uh, hang on the actual fact of time for the sun to go to supernova, it takes thousands of years, okay, even when it starts. So we may be seeing the very beginnings of thousands of years of the sun going supernova, okay? Now, we're not in the solar maximum, no, because they've had X1 flares before, okay? We're not getting X1 flares, so we're not going supernova anytime soon, thousands of years, okay? But we're starting to see what we will go supernova with will be the star cluster that we're showing you. Now, you can see this dramatic action here. This is a fresh thought of Lasco 3. Now, I was going to try to show you the remnant on here, and basically, it's way more than one remnant. There's tons of remnants, but we also basically, you can see these here, and I have a better shot to be able to, but let's zoom in on this while we got this dramatic shot here real fast. We keep on getting all this stuff dramatically, and we'll get custom 777 we'll put in, and we'll pop in, we'll screw it over, and we'll be able to see a CME, and reacting to probably material from the remnants that are up there. So you see that awesome reactivity uh, to something, and more than likely massive distances, but the electrical field, the radar shield of the sun, it senses that stuff and then it puts these CMEs out. And as you can see, the remnants, which basically they have a luminosity, so it's hard to tell whether it's stars or planets getting ate by the sun eventually. So it's part of the nuclear reaction of atoms, okay? So you have a nuclear reactor up there. It's nuclear fusion no matter what, and there's tons of tiny little planets and stars, but you got to remember that these are bigger than Earth right here. You see that? That is bigger than Earth. Okay, let's zoom in real fast with the magnifier, because I can pop that up, and I won't be able to point, but I'm gonna be look we're going to be looking at these two items there, you know that. Kind of keep people from the hysteria that the world's going to end or anything's going to happen. Okay, which is something. There's always something happening, okay? But most all this something happening is usually people on Earth. Knowledge and corporate warfare and so forth and so on. So you see that there, those stars there. So 
anyway, there's remnants up there too. We've got a famous remnant. Let's pop out of here real fast. Maybe I can get it on a good shot from uh, the other Navy shot. And this is all today. Realize that. that uh, let me get rid of that. When we pop down on this. And just trying to trade the remnant. But this is all from Navy today. And basically, that's Antares. That's not Mercury. Or something. It's something. It's not Mercury. Basically the same satellite, different angles, and could be more than one satellite. Don't even care about that. But no matter what, it's this is coming from a head. Okay, the head array, and basically on C2 we were looking at the remnant right there. And let me get the zoom, and we'll just pop in at 777 again real fast. Because then I can use the pointer, and we're going to that right there. And we move over and down, and that's the remnant we know. And we and when it's not that volatile, and basically that's the electrical connection that uh, goes out to the other cluster that we see that's vast distance outway. I.e., go to the pixels that were blocked when I had the zoom up there, and basically I can zoom in again real fast here with custom 777, and we will end up seeing that they don't want you see the connection and they pixelize it out as you see they block the pixelization of this star cluster to the sun because they don't want you to think the end of the world's coming immediately which it's not okay it takes thousands of years for this to happen okay that's why we need to space races on maximum because we know that we need to populate way more than the earth okay and it's not immediate okay there's plenty of time thousands of years but we got to get our ass in gear okay now I'm gonna pop over here because you can see some stars or planets basically there is some planets between here because you can see the darkness of it this is factual actual so we got 777 and then we take the magnifier and I'm gonna be going we're gonna look at this here and this here because these are dark so you know that more than likely they're planets or mass objects and they're huge huge objects out there and you can see this is more than likely the remnant and the halo and the electrical connections that we get all the way the stairway all the way to this other star cluster here okay stars the sun is a star remember it's a huge star that we have the magnetical and there's more than likely three st stars in our Van Allen I said it wrong in my earlier video and I'm gonna have that video up today and it'll be actually up before this one but I said it wrong with being saying that three su there's way more than three suns in the Milky Way galaxy. I said Milky Way galaxy. I shouldn't have said it in the Van Allen belts. And as you can see that you can see the Van, Van Allen belts of the sun that basically all this stuff magnetically out and connects all those planets in the previous video. Earth, everything, everything we know of the nine, ten, now eleven and twelve possibly planets that you can see magnetically connected, and then they are connected to this star cluster here. As you can see, they pixelize this out, and they're not wanting you to see that too much, okay? Now, we get the magnifier up, then my pointer won't be working worth a crap when we get the magnifier, but we can still get great looks out there. And as you see, it might start playing, but no matter what, there's a dark black star planets, basically massive objects up there between us and that star cluster off there. So we're seeing the stairway to heaven because we're seeing the stairway to another star cluster, okay? And they're pixelizing a lot of it out, not letting us see a bunch of it. So it'd be nice to see what's there, okay? Because this star cluster is up there, okay? There's tons of stars up over there. And as you see, there's planets because the idea that stars don't put off shadow as planets do. And as you see those shadows right there, and then we'll magnify up a little bit. And it's just basically software programs, home software programs on your computers that end up letting you, and as you see, no matter what, even if it's an X-ray shadow of a star, okay, planets only put off the same size of a uh, shadow is what they are. Now stars, we might have a good example of scientific fact right there that they maybe do put off a bigger shadow. Stars, that means suns, okay? So I'll just move the magnifier out of the way, and you can see all this stuff is real. And we zoomed in on these star clusters here, or whatever planetoid object or dark object that these are out there. And this is all true, all these remnants that we know of and everything like that. So, 
And if you've watched in the previous video, you can also see that basically this, the sun, is actually a nuclear reactor. It's fusion. It's absolute that it's fusion. There's no doubt that the sun is fu nuclear fusion. Okay? And it's fusing with other stars. Okay? So, now at the very end of this footage, you're going to see Mercury come in over here to the right, and it's moving left, but it actually you got to remember all the angles of the satellites and everything like that and upside down you see because actually we rotate counterclockwise so this it's going to be coming in like it's moving clockwise but mercury actually moves you got to remember reverse it around because this is shooting upside down so remember where core a is at okay and the angles and what you're viewing at this because basically you're going to end up seeing mercury come in at the very end but Mercury moves counterclockwise and all that other stuff you see is moving the other direction it moves clockwise because it's magnetically all that other stars and you're seeing in planetoids objects in the background those bright objects they move so remember Mercury comes in towards the camera A okay so this is actually the satellite is the left hand side of the, what you're viewing okay and Mercury's coming toward it because Mercury rotates counterclockwise around the Sun Venus also, and just like Earth, when we rotate to the east in our axis, okay, and we rotate around the sun, not in a flat like a plate either, okay, which is for showing you how we rotate, okay, we rotate counterclockwise, all the stuff in the background on this shot in A is Mercury's coming in counterclockwise, even though it looks like it's coming in, it looks like it's coming in clockwise, you see, from the camera angle, but it's not, it's actually moving this direction, and the other stuff that's magnetically tied in the background that's way far away is moving clockwise, okay? It's actually moving like this, okay? And Mercury moves this way. So let's go back to the shot. So the satellite's actually over here. Satellite A is over here. As you see, this is core 2A, okay? So I'm going to hit play, and Mercury will come in. It's basically going to look like it's coming counterclockwise, but it's not. I mean, it's going to look like it's coming clockwise because it's going to look like it's going to come around the sun like this, which is which it is, but it's actually moving counterclockwise because this shot is upside down. And then you can place your star cluster from there. Okay? And I won't say that because I don't want to confuse you. Now I'm going to try to take you Sechi B real fast after you see this footage, and here comes Mercury in upside down and moving counterclockwise, but it actually looks like it. Remember, this is static atomic Yes, atomic. Things are cracking together up there at the sun, okay? Always, because it's an atomic reactor. And this is electricity, not flames, through space. And also that the point that I'm trying to make is that you have to have perspective of where this stuff is in space, especially this here star cluster, because this is at least three to four awe you away from Earth, because Earth is over here somewhere, okay? high or low no matter the camera's shooting from over here and it moves away from earth a is moved like an orbit if just fake that this is earth the satellite is over here okay and upside down okay so you can get a plot of where this star cluster is at when you're looking at the sun from earth because remember when you're out in space looking at those shots it's 360 degrees bubble because of the satellite can move around okay but remember its angles of view and remember where the earth is at and then how the rotation that basically you know that Mercury goes counterclockwise, Venus, all of our planets go counterclockwise around the Sun. Okay? So remember where your satellite's at, and then 360 degrees like a bubble where that shot's coming from, upside down or straight up, and the angle towards Earth and your angles of view, and then what you can end up seeing, because B is always shooting at the Sun, and then what you could see Mercury from B. You can see Venus, but if they're way off in the distance, they're going to be tiny little specks, okay? When they're up close, they look huger than what the planets actually are, and then you can you don't even get sometimes an angle. We're not getting Venus right now because we can't see it. we barely seen it on that one Sechi shot I showed you. Now, let me show you something. I've got this player froze right now, but basically right here, this straight line that you're seeing, that's basically a quasar. More than likely, we're seeing quasars. Let me play it. Before. Spike the word quasar. Gamma rays, ladies and gentlemen gamma rays and I need to it's hard to freeze it so anyway you see you're seeing gamma rays going across but you're way huger and way out in space and we've been seeing the reports from the gamma rays have been showing up Hercules and so forth 
So, 